trauma to a LASIK flap can lead to severe vision threatening complications. We present a case of a 42 year old male who was referred to us with decreased vision in his left eye following trauma with a toy gun a day earlier. He had undergone bilateral LASIK eight years prior. Best connected visual acuity in the affected eye was counting fingers at 2 meters with conjunctival congestion, bandage contact lens and the LASIK flap with its temporal edge folded inwards. Anterior segment OCT confirmed infolding of the LASIK flap with flap edema cells on the interface and over the bare stroma and along the hinge of the folded flap. A diagnosis of traumatic infolding of the LASIK flap was made and repositioning of his LASIK flap was planned. At this point, certain complications that need to be remembered include flap tear or damage due to pre-existing trauma or intraoperative manipulations, diffuse lamellar keratitis, epithelial ingrowth, and interface microbial keratitis. The final surgical plan was left eye, flap elevation, interface wash, mechanical debridement, alcohol epithelectomy with fibrin glue application under topical anesthesia. The bandage contact lens was removed. The nasal edge of the flap was marked. The flap was elevated with a blunt cannula. The flap was unfolded completely. The undersurface of the flap was washed. A hockey stick knife was used to debride these epithelial cells of the stromal bed. Thorough debridement of the stromal bed was done followed by washing and drying. 20% ethanol was applied to the stromal bed and the undersurface of the flap for 20 seconds and washed off. The stromal bed was dried. The fibrinogen component of the fibrin glue was applied along the edge of the stromal bed. The undersurface of the, the flap was also dried. And the thrombin component of the fibrin glue was applied along the edge of the undersurface of the flap. The flap was repositioned and aligned to the prior marking. The edges were dried. Extra fibrin glue was scraped off. Peripheral corneal epithelial cells and epithelial cells along the hinge were scraped off. A thorough wash was given, followed by drying. Bandage contact lens was placed. Considering the increased risk of DLK, patient was started on 1% prednisolone acetate eye drops one hourly for three days and then tapered along with topical antibiotics and lubricants. On post-operative day 4, flap was well opposed with flap edema. On post-operative day 14, his uncorrected visual acuity was 6, 9 and 6. And on post-operative 5 weeks, his uncorrected visual acuity was 6, 6 and 6 with a clear interface and a well opposed flap which was also noted on anterior segment OCT. At the final follow-up at 8 months, his uncorrected visual acuity was 6, 6 and 6 with a clear interface. Traumatic flap displacement is a rare complication of LASIK occurring in 1 to 2 percent of cases, the longest interval being 16 years following microkeratome flap and 7 years following femtosecond laser flap. In a large series of 66 eyes of late traumatic flap displacement, the incidence of epithelial ingrowth was noted to be close to 40% followed by flap folds and DLK. Previous workers have described the use of 70% ethanol followed by fibrin glue for the management of epithelial ingrowth following traumatic flap displacement. We prefer to do mechanical debridement followed by use of 20% ethanol as the cells were fresh. Fibrin glue has been noted to act as a physical barrier to epithelial cell migration for about two weeks. Use of fibrin glue helped in avoiding suturing of the flap which can lead to astigmatism and also helped in preventing epithelial ingrowth. However, fibrin glue should be avoided in eyes with vegetative trauma where the risk of microbial keratitis is high.
Thus, excellent visual and anatomical rehabilitation can be achieved in eyes with traumatic displacement of LASIK flap by meticulous preoperative evaluation and planning along with effective intraoperative and postoperative care. Thank you.